What's up, everybody, and welcome here to an all-new edition of Super Powered Pop. You know, Super Powered Pop is Dan Tortora Broadcast Media's entertainment show. We've spoken with illustrators, writers, as well as actors and actresses throughout the years, and we're happy today to be with you inside of the Parker Banner Kent and Wayne Studios as we continue to talk about those topics that are on my mind, on your mind. So let's get into it. Parker Banner, Kent and Wayne on 21500 Catawba Ave, Sweet A in Cornelius, North Carolina. They are your go-to comic book and gaming shop, and they are just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. That, once again, is 21500 Catawba Ave, Sweet A in Cornelius, North Carolina. Big time shout out to Parker Banner, Kent Wayne, a.k.a. PBKW. And one of those, the first one, the P in PBKW, is for Parker, Peter Parker. And we're talking about Spider-Man today. And my working title for this was, Why Not the Butt? <laughs> and so essentially, you know, what, what that means is, when we look at spiders and we try to understand why does Spider-Man need web shooters, because growing up as a kid, I, you know, Spider-Man has been my favorite character, was my favorite character back then, continues to be my favorite character throughout my entire life when it comes to superheroes. And I thought, okay, well, if you get bit by this radioactive spider, then you should have all the powers of a spider, including making webs. But here's some research on a web and how it's made. So here's some information here that you may not know. So spider webs... The secret to how spider silk can be so strong and so elastic at the same time has to do with its unique chemical makeup. On a molecular level, spider silk is made up of several amino acid proteins arranged in a chain. The two primary amino acids that make up this chain are glycine and alanine. In spider silk, glycine and alanine chain together in quote-unquote blocks repetitively. Each of these proteins contain three distinct, three distinct quote-unquote regions that have their own distinct properties. The regions that make up most of the quote-unquote body of both proteins consists of an amorphous, stretchy matrix. This flexible material absorbs kinetic energy and also gives spider silk its elasticity. The other two regions of the protein are embedded within the amorphous region. These regions are both crystalline, meaning they're very tough and they resist stretching. One of the two regions is also rigid. The less rigid crystalline region of the proteins moves along with the amorphous portion. Meanwhile, the crystals in the rigid region lock together with the crystals in the non-rigid region. This relationship allows the rigid crystalline region to move with the amorphous regions without stretching or breaking. The results is spider silk that is strong, tough, and elastic all at once. So that's what the spider webs are. How are they made? Well, all spider species extrude silk from specialized, quote-unquote, spinnerets. The spinnerets are located on their abdomens. A spinneret is the external part of a spider silk gland. Silk glands organically produce and store the, quote-unquote, precursor, state of spider silk. When spiders consume protein, a portion is broken down and rebuilt into the precursor components of spider silk. In its pre precursor state, spider silk is a kind of crystalline liquid gel. To transform precursor liquid into its silk state, it must pass through a series of ducts. These ducts connect the spinneret to the silk gland. When liquid silk passes through these ducts, cells in the ducts draw water out from it. When the dehydrated liquid silk reaches the spinneret gland, a second duct introduces hydrogen into it. This combination creates an acid bath within the gland. The acid bath transforms the liquid protein into a gel. The spider then pulls this gel through a tiny opening in the spinneret, forcing it into its extremely slender form. Spider silk gets a gel, congeals into a solid form immediately upon contacting air. And those spinnerets well, that we're talking about here, it's coming through the posterior of 
the spider. So, as it's said here, and I want to thank Plunkets.net for this information, spider webs are incredible, beautiful works of nature. They're also kind of gross butt secretions you don't want in your home. So, that brings me to why not the butt? Because when we learn about Spider-Man on the big screen, we first see Tobey Maguire's. And Tobey Maguire is shooting these webs out of his own body, which means everything I just told you about, how a spider web is made and like what they are and how they're made and all of those things that we just talked about, it comes through the spinneret. The spinneret is supposed to be in the butt of the spider in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movies, Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3, starring Tobey Maguire as Peter Parker, a.k.a. Spider-Man, the spinneret is on his wrist. So you see on the screen right now that he has this kind of goo, almost like he's dropped some type of icing on his wrist. And that goo on his wrist, that's the spinneret there. So essentially, if we were to look closer, we would see a tiny hole in his wrist that would always be visible, which would essentially have an opening on both wrists to his body, into into these gla- you know, in, into the glands and into all the stuff that would work through his body. So this has a lot of issues because he would essentially have an opening in his, in two parts of his body at all times. But it begs the question of Spider-Man. If Spider-Man gets bit by a radioactive spider, like I thought as a kid, I'm sitting here saying to myself as a kid and then growing up as an adult and still to this day in my late 30s, if he can climb on walls and he, you know, is super strong and acrobatic and all this stuff, why can't he make his own webbing? Well, that would be essentially because as I was talking with Parker Banner, Kent and Wayne owner Matt Milburn, who is a big Spider-Man fan as well. Spider-Man's also his favorite. He said if they created a Spider-Man and stayed true to spiders, he would be shooting the webs essentially out of his butt. So the spinneret has now moved in Sam Raimi's movies to the wrist. But again, this means that all the process that uh, the, the whole process that you and I just went over here that is the scientifical process of how these, you know, what these webs are, what they're made up of, and how they're essentially created in the spider's body. This is changing all of this, that instead of as a instead of it being a butt secretion, it is a secretion through the wrist of Toby Maguire's Peter Parker. This to me makes him more of a true spider, but essentially it also begs a lot of questions. It changes the process. Could this be done? Sure. And I like this iteration of it more because, one, it's not a butt secretion, and two, because it it shows that he is more truly a spider. But when we look at Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man that came out after Tobey Maguire's, we can see that the web shooters are here and that he essentially has to create this. We see him go through the process of designing these you know, trying to get these webs to come out of the web shooter and trying to make it do exactly what it's supposed to do trying to make it directional and all that good stuff the problem that we see with andrew garfield's spider-man and later on tom holland's spider-man who essentially has all of this tech given to him from given given to him by his mentor robert downey jr's tony stark aka iron man these web shooters run out And as we saw in Andrew Garfield's The Amazing Spider-Man 2, (coughs) pardon me, (coughs) when Electro hit them with his electric blasts, it, it could stop this from working because obviously how it's operated, it's, it is charged up so he could take this charge out, which is why we saw Gwen Stacy start talking to Peter Parker about having this magnetic addition to his web shooters. And if he utilizes the magnets, then he'll be able to throw off the electronic charges that are coming from Electro. So Electro can't render these worthless, essentially. But this is the issue. Like I said, when you have web shooters, you run out of webbing. So this can happen, obviously, in the comic books, and it can happen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. 
as well as the Sony-verse, as we saw with Andrew Garfield. So as we look at these and we say to ourselves, okay, that's more true to Spider-Man in the comics than it is of Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, it still puts us in a place of Spider-Man not being able to have uh, essentially his greatest asset you can say it's his mind, but his greatest asset of having these webs that he uses in battle and uses in all different ways with the different uh, ways that he can shoot out his webs and what he can do with that. If you take this away from Spider-Man, is he really Spider-Man? So to me, it was just worth having the explanation. It was worth looking up how a spider does create the webbing in the first place and to go over this because as a kid, like I said, being a big fan of Spider-Man, in the comics and growing up reading these comics, I couldn't understand why Tobey Maguire didn't make sense because I didn't fully understand the process that a spider goes through to essentially make their own webbing. And we see this in Spider-Man No More, a.k.a. Spider-Man 3 of the Marvel Studios iteration of Spider-Man, which is Tom Holland. Spider-Man Homecoming, then Far From Home, and then Spider-Man No More. Spider-Man No More, that's where we see Tom Holland's Spider-Man and Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, who both utilize web shooters, speak with Tobey Maguire about how it just comes through his body, and he and Tobey says he can't really understand how it happens, and then they said, does it come out of anywhere else, which could be leading into this conversation about the fact that spiders make it through their butt, that that's where it comes out, that's where the spinneret is essentially and so this could be the kind of nod to we didn't really explain how he can create this these webs within his body he doesn't really know how he could do it but it's organic for him and so Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland not being able to do that or trying to understand it ultimately I think Spider-Man should be able to create his own webbing to make him a true spider like I said but at the same time it also begs the question of where would it come out of, and if we could get it out of the wrist, could it come out of something else too, and how would we see him go through this process? Would he be making webs while he's sleeping? When is his body doing this? Is it constantly doing it? So, and in a world where we break everything down, that can get some people to call BS on it. At the same time, we could just argue that it's one of those phenomenon of Listen, he got bit by a radioactive spider. How does any of this make sense? So if he could do all these things, he could do this too. But it, it would mean that the spinneret would have to move to his wrists. And why would it do that if it was trying to act like an actual spider? Because when we see him crawl, we see him crawl like a spider. But he also doesn't grow more limbs. And he doesn't have eight legs as a spider does. So there are some things that mirror a spider and there are some things that don't. But for you all wondering why... Do you need web shooters if you're bit by a radioactive spider? And if some of you were thinking, why not the butt? Hopefully we've answered that for you today in a funny but also real way of going through the research of how spiders create their webbing and what that webbing truly is. This episode of Super Powered Pop has been brought to you by Parker Banner, Kent, and Wayne, uh, our exclusive studio partner, Parker Banner, Kent, and Wayne Comics and Games is there for you on 21500 Catawba Ave, Suite A in Cornelius, North Carolina, just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. And for short, PBKW, you can look them up as Parker Banner, Kent, and Wayne on Facebook and PBKW on Instagram as well as on X, the former Twitter. And of course, you can go to a search engine and look up Parker Banner, Kent, and Wayne for their website for more information as well. For now, this is Super Powered Pop. You can find us on Facebook, X, and Instagram at Super Powered Pop. I'm Dan Tortora, and remember, your hero lies within.